Hey guys, Steve here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tech Tree Destroyers, best Tech Tree Destroyers at Tier 7 going into the new year. We just started January 2022. All right, so that's going to be the perspective of this list being made. A few caveats. Number one, this is my opinion, and I guarantee this list is going to be controversial. All right, when I sat down after compiling the stats and jotting down some thoughts, I didn't think the list was going to pan out like this, okay? I'm as surprised as you guys are going to be, so strap yourselves in. Uh, <laughs> that said, I guarantee you some of you guys are going to disagree with me. Some of you guys may completely disagree with me. You might have a couple people out there that are like, hey, that list is pretty spot on. But in general, the fun of making these videos is getting the feedback from everyone, seeing what kind of consensus exists out there and what kind of, uh, what are some of the more hotly debated ones, all right? So when I'm playing Destroyers, I'm capturing and contesting bases and trying to deal with enemy destroyers. That's the view that we're going to be kind of looking at this. Yes, the stats will factor it in. You can see some stats in the background there. But, and I got more robust charts that we don't have on screen here that I reference when I'm doing these type of things. But that said, we factor in everything. Maneuverability, you know, overall fun factor, you know, how good they are in general against all classes, how well they can perform the roles. Etc. 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 So jumping right into it here, number nine, second newest uh, destroyer on the list, Udaloy. All right, now this one doesn't really do anything that <laughs> great, you know. I mean, it's got pretty high torpedo damage uh, per minute, which is fine, but it has a very high sea detectability. I could bring it down a little bit. My build is not really necessarily spec for. Uh, stealth, but with these Russian destroyer lines, I kind of embrace the fact that they're going to be outspotted by basically everything, so not necessarily uh, specking for that. That said, uh, you know, good torpedo output, but the fact that we're going to be being outspotted by a lot of the enemy destroyers pretty much as a rule, and then the fact that we have low uh, damage per minute. It's not on the lowest end of the spectrum, but it's definitely bottom half, okay? So we're going to have trouble fighting the destroyers in raw uh, gun fights. They're going to outspot us, so they might get torpedo advantages. They might get uh, first shot, second shot advantages on us. Uh, there's a lot of different things that are going to lead to the Tashkin kind of struggling dealing with the destroyers. And just the maneuverability in general, you know, it's got a turn radius 610, pretty high, I guess. You know, middle of the pack, but rudder shift long, at least on my builds, 5.9 seconds. So... You know, maneuverability-wise, not great. Speed is pretty good, you know. But other than that, the maneuverability kind of suffers. The gun fighting, again, a little bit of a letdown for a Russian line of destroyers. And just in general, the strengths of the torpedoes don't necessarily outweigh the negatives of the guns. And the torpedoes, we did, we got decent range, 8 kilometers, 65 knots, so it's kind of slow. Uh, so combine that with a longer reload, and there's just not a lot to love about the Udaloy in my uh, estimation, at least. Number eight, this one surprised me. I didn't think the Z-23 would do that great this year, uh, but I have it second worst. Little bit surprising, especially because you guys know that I do value a good solid uh, sonar and a destroyer, but now that we got the Friesland and the Loying, uh, we have very good sonars at the uh, tier. We got a lot of radars out there, so sonar is a little bit devalued in general. At least on the Z-23, because it's you know, it's a good sonar compared to, like, the Lightning and, of course, all the other destroyers that don't have sonar. But compared to some of the newer ships that are getting better sonar. And then you factor in the fact that its damage output is trash across the board. And I almost put this in last place, I'm going to be honest with you. Z-23, it's just kind of been falling out of my favor gradually over time as more and more ships come in and... Now that I sat down and really thought about it tonight, uh, compiling this list, I think the Z-23 is no longer that worthy. Of course, some of you guys are going to disagree strongly. It does have an outstanding health pool, uh, but the damage per minute, just not there. The torpedo, well, fast reloading, low damage, uh, leading to, you know, an overall pretty poor uh, damage output of that. Outstanding concealment and uh, decent maneuverability overall. You know, not the fastest ship, but... Not the worst moving ship in the world either way, but Z-23 dropping in my estimation this year, and I'm going to put it at number eight. Number seven, French destroyer Le Fantasque. This one, again, will be a little bit controversial. I'm sure some people like that one. That one did take a heavy nerf when 
the uh, Kleber came out at Legendary Tier. I think it was a little bit too Kleber-esque to begin with, so they chopped it down at the knees. And what we're left with is a below-average uh, gun performance ship, medium, uh, middle of the pack, I should say, performance with the torpedoes. You got three launchers, but one of them's dedicated in the middle, one per side, so you do have to be doing a little bit flipping around. Not always viable. And even then, uh, the torpedo output, not that great. It does still have outstanding speed, of course. Uh, pretty good concealment. It's it's good at what it does. It ambushes ships, it gets into spots they're not expecting, and then kind of smokes them with high damage torpedoes, you know. So it, it does what it does well, but it doesn't have a smoke, which is going to make it above average in terms of difficulty. Uh, again, it does have a tor it has a gun reload, main gun reloader, but you're going to need that. You basically need that to survive the uh, destroyer v destroyer fights because you're going to be losing against most of them except for ships like Z-23 and Kagero. And, you know, it's just the difficulty of the ship and kind of the limited ability to pump out the damage kind of drops it down in my estimation. Again, there's going to be some fans of that ship. The French destroyers are fun and they can be extremely uh, useful, no doubt about it, but in my estimation below average on the this list and just keep in mind that all these destroyers are pretty good at tier seven uh, when we're going through this tier or number six rather japanese gunboat akizuki the uh first destroyer that the line actually splits at first gunboat on the line and what is it it's uh high hp high damage output second highest damage output per the main guns at the tier uh torpedo damage abysmal by far the worst, or at least damage per minute, rather. It only has one launcher, uh, reloads just shy of every two minutes. Yeah, it's got great damage, but you're only launching four torps every two minutes. I mean, the damage per minute uh, output is obviously going to be very low in that case. So, the ability for itself to protect itself when being rushed is low. It's better than something like the Friesland that doesn't have any torps whatsoever. But that's what these torps are going to be doing on these gunboats, is kind of protecting the ship and limiting the options of ships to push into it. So Akizuki, kind of a clunky little bugger when you're moving it around. Lowest speed at the tier. Concealment pretty good, and AA is something that's newer for these destroyers, and it does have about the second best at the tier. So that should be considered as well. But the, the main uh, thing about this ship is the great HP and the high damage per minute. I think this is a great uh, division player's destroyer uh, if you can get this paired up with teammates that you know are going to help protect you uh, then you can just do some awesome things i've seen some good players do some uh, nasty nasty things with the akazuki and i've had my own fair share of success with that ship as well so that's rounding out the bottom half of the pack at number six uh, right in the middle we're going to have kagero okay now this ship destroyer players <laughs> destroyer or you know it's the purest torpedo boat that we got a lot of people, when they're playing the stories, that's all they want to do. And if you don't understand the importance of playing the caps, countering the destroyers, or you just don't care, then you probably got Kagero at number one, okay? But fighting other destroyers has got the worst damage output per the guns, HE, AP, it doesn't matter. And, of course, torpedo damage per minute, highest out of all the tech tree, 151, next closest competitor. On my builds, Udaloy at 135, 135,000, so... You know, dramatically different. And the Kagero's gotten some uh, buffs over the years, and cutting down the reload is one way they've been doing it. So, very quick uh, cycling torps on these Kagero. In fact, it's only 66.4 seconds for the reload on my build these days. So, very, very dangerous. But once again, uh, you're kind of limited with how you have to deal with all these other destroyers that can uh, beat you. You basically have to help spot them for your teammates, make sure that they help chime in or else you're going to have to engage them in a limited manner, take a few shots, disengage with the smoke, hopefully you get them with a torp or something, but as you're disengaging, let the fight reset, go back and hopefully finish them off now that you have a HP advantage built in after that first engagement. So a bit, little bit trickier there, limiting the versatility. That said, you know, and the other thing to keep in mind about the Kagero is like, let's say you're on a team and you got three Kageros on your team, you're almost certainly going to lose that game because <laughs> odds are... Anytime you have a Japanese destroyer on your team, all they're going to try and do is get behind the enemy and either torp the carrier or the battleships that are sitting in the back buffing the Deweys. The least valuable thing the destroyers can possibly do, of course. 
And if you get multiple uh, Japanese destroyers who tend to get very distracted very easily, then your odds of winning the game go down, losing the game go way up, of course. So however you want to look at it. But that said, players that understand the Kagero well uh, can make this a very scary platform, of course. So keep in mind that the Kagero does have great capabilities. Uh, it's just kind of one of the least uh, well-played uh, destroyers of Tier 7 that you're going to see. Coming in at 4, now we're in the top half of the list here. We got Tashkent, Russian destroyer, the first one, more of a gunboat. And interestingly enough, if you look at these builds, I got uh, troops on my more torpedo-focused Udaloy. And I got this Splendento guy on my more gun-focused Tashkent. So I kind of have the builds pulling them both more towards a balance build, if you will. Like, I could put troops on the Tash, can't go all in with the guns. That's a build I've run plenty of times. Uh, and it kind of pushes it less into the versatile uh, aspect of the ship and more of a specialized aspect, which is fine if that's how you want to run them. Just note that with these builds, uh, both on Tashkent and Udaloy, I'm not going, all, I'm not leaning all in on kind of the way they're designed. But Tashkent, very fearsome guns. Uh, if you do spec with Trubetskoy or a gun focus, you will be in the top three uh, damage outputs uh, at the tier in terms of HP. AP doesn't matter. With this build, it's third best AP. And with this build, I like it because the torpedo damage is third best as well. So that's why I kind of like this balanced approach. You do have good, hard-hitting guns. Fast cycling torpedoes. Good reload. You got three launchers, three torps. You got to remember that you got three launchers. Uh, if you play the ship occasionally, you might just forget about it launch two once in a while, like I do. Uh, but, you know, you got great damage output across the board. On this build, we do got a little bit of a focus on the detection. That brings it down to 5.8. Of course, you're still going to get outspotted by basically all other destroyers. But that gives us a little bit more wiggle room with the torps. Uh, I, I've run it a lot without any uh, concealment option as well. And you can certainly do that as well. You just have to understand the flow of the game, okay? You gotta draw the destroyers in towards you and your support ships, uh, rely on the fact that, or understand the fact that you're gonna get outspotted by them. But if you're using your support properly, uh, you can get rid of those destroyers. And once those are gone, now you got a little bit of wiggle room to cause all sorts of havoc. You can get either in uh, positions where you can drop a smoke, start bombing on them using the guns, get behind islands, bomb them with the guns, or even get these torpedoes in play and start launching at cruisers, battleships, whatever else, backline beddies. So Tashkent, a lot of fun to play, very sturdy. You got a good uh, health pool on this one. I think it's actually still the best at the tier, it looks like, even with the Pablo. No, just right behind the Pablo, sorry, which is a premium. Italian destroyer, but second best health pool at the tier, good versatility overall. I think the Tashkent's a little bit underrated. It might be a little bit harder to play due to the high concealment, but overall, uh, still one of the more effective destroyers. Coming in at number three, UK British destroyer. A lot of people might put this number one. I don't uh, blame you for doing that. Lightning, six quick cycling smoke charges. Now the Lightning, to me, is kind of the jack of all trades. You know, it's kind of middle of the pack of basically everything. The damage output, not great. Okay. Uh, but it is middle of the pack in terms of uh, bull shells. Same thing with the torpedo damage. Torpedoes, we got the option to launch singularly, which is a little bit more difficult. If you do it in the quote-unquote widespread launch, it resembles more of a normal launch. It will be a little bit wider than your normal uh, destroyer launch in general, which makes the torpedoes a little bit less effective overall. Um... So uh, I, I don't think the damage is great on this. This one could have gone lower on my list, but I just think because it's so good on so many things, I think it has to be in the top three, and here it is at number three. Uh, the sonar, it does have it, but it's just a low uh, range one. It's like three, 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 four, whatever it is, kilometers. Uh, so you're not going to get a huge boost out of that sonar ever. Uh, it's pretty situational. Anything rushing into you, especially battleships, they'll uh, proxy spot you shortly after the sonar actually becomes effective so you got to be careful with that but the quick cycling uh, smokes the high fire starting chance the good he performance uh overall i think it's the fourth best he damage per minute at the uh, tier overall lightning just a lot going for it not a lot of downsides uh number two the most uh you know the sheriff play style 
Fletcher, U.S. Destroyer. And you guys might be thinking, what's left? What's at number one? Yeah. Some of you might have figured it out already, and I'm surprised myself with the number one. But number two, Fletcher, of course, highest damage per minute guns uh, for the Tech Tree ships, hands down. Okay, the HE damage, 247 on my build compared to 205. And this is 100,000 damage per minute, potentially, on the Akizuki. Alright, so the second strongest gunboat in terms of damage output. So, outstanding damage. Now, it doesn't have the sonars. But it does, you know, at this point in time, due to the prevalence of the radars and the sonars now, you got to be getting good at kind of baiting the use of the sonars, avoiding them, and then looking for opportunities to strike. And if you can catch any other destroyer in kind of a 1v1 situation, you should smash it, basically. The guns should tear everything to shreds. It will tear other ships to shreds, of course, as well. And even the AP, second highest damage per minute behind the Akizuki there. Uh, if you catch broadside battleships, for instance, pepper the uh, superstructure, you can you can rack up the damage very quickly. Torpedo damage very low. Okay, it's second at second lowest at the tier. In fact, that's due to the fact that it has a really high reload though. It does have 9.2 kilometer torps, I believe. Uh, let's see, up range slow torps, 55 knots, which is pretty useless basically at tier seven, because uh, that's time to target goes way up, and the odds of anyone moving. Changing course, changing speed at tier 7, much more likely than at, say, like a tier 3, where a lot of people are just sailing on the straight line, trying to figure out how to aim. Those things you can hit with 55 knot torps, but at tier 7, most players are going to be doing some sort of bobbing and weaving, uh, which makes those torps kind of more or less a little bit on the useless side of things. Uh, good maneuverability, though. It's kind of like a fighter maneuverability. Uh, 650, or, I'm uh, sorry, 560 turn radius, speed decent, 36.5 mine, rudder shift outstanding, 3.3, detection a little bit higher, you know, a little bit above average, but overall pretty solid, and once again, uh, the guns will just kick the crap out of other destroyers, so if you're playing it properly, you're not getting, uh, beaten by the consumables, which is the biggest threat to the Fletcher, of course, then you should be winning a lot of the fights. And keep in mind the AA, now that uh, the carriers will be coming more and more prevalent as time goes on, above average on the AA as well. And number one, like I said, controversy, and this one surprised me as well, but I got Xian Yang, I don't even know how to say it. Asian Destroyer. Uh, now, I'm envisioning this being used under the four smoke option. You do have the option to put the radar on there, which I think is... A nice option it's good for variety and spice of life type of issues uh, but in terms of flexibility I'm kind of viewing this as a lightning with a good set of guns okay and Zen Yang I didn't realize until I plugged in these stats here but it does have the third highest HE DPM out of any destroyer tech tree destroyer at tier 7 and that means that it has the tools to win a lot of these destroyer v destroyer fights biggest knock in the Zen Yang or whatever is the deep water torps okay we cannot torp the destroyers that we're fighting that's a disadvantage no doubt about it no doubt about it there but if we can dodge their torps you know juke them get them to launch or whatever understand when they're launching at us and we avoid those launches then we got the guns that we should be winning the majority of these fights and by the way outside of torping other destroyers the torpedoes are very good now the damage isn't huge it's kind of middle of the pack uh, in terms of damage per minute, but the fact that they basically materialize out of thin air with these low detection torps, uh, very hard to dodge. Okay, now they're slower. They're on the slower side. What are they at here? Uh, 64 knots, so not barn burners by any means, or, you know, not screamer torps. But, uh, you know, if you can get them on target and you happen to hit them there, they're very hard to dodge, very hard to deal with, uh, which makes those torps pretty uh, good overall. But rudder shift, outstanding turn radius, just a smidge worse than the Fletcher. Speed, great, 38 knots. Here we got great maneuverability. Uh, four quick cycling, longer duration torps, or I'm sorry, smokes, which I actually think after playing uh, a fair amount of Xin Yang, just grinding it out and modding it out and everything, I think the, the smoke configuration on this is actually better than the lightnings, okay? Yeah, the lightning cycle a little bit more, but these ones we can actually linger around and use a little bit longer, okay? So you can get better production uh, that way. And, you know, I, I'm kind of surprised about it, uh, but I actually think that <laughs> this is probably the best tech tree ship destroyer at Tier 7. Maybe my mind will change in a week. 
maybe in a month, maybe in a year, maybe never. Maybe I'm just completely delusional at the moment. But that, my picks did kind of surprise me when I laid them out. But looking over my list here, I'm not seeing a lot that I personally disagree with. But once again, I do want to hear what you guys think. Has he lost his marbles? Or am I spot on? You know, let me know. Let me know in the feedback what you get or the comments what sort of feedback you guys got on this one. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy it. It was a fun video to make. And if you did enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hey, consider subscribing because we got lots of World of Warships content coming and it's coming all the time. If you got questions or comments, leave them below. You know the drill. Want to hear from you guys, and we'll see you later. Peace.